Hey, hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Angular Air. I'm your host, Justin. And on today's episode, we are going to learn about lazy loading Angular components. Uh, see if we can get a little bit of performance benefit from that. That'll be super interesting. Looking forward to it. Uh, I think we're familiar with lazy loading modules, but uh, dive deeper into like smaller finite pieces it should be pretty cool. Can't wait to learn about it. So uh, let's say hi to our panelists, then we'll meet our guests, and then we'll get into the content. Joining us today, we've got Alyssa. Alyssa, what's going on? Hello, hello. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. Bonnie's with us. Bonnie, how's it going? It's going great. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I, I like our Friday scheduled stuff. It kind of, it's, I don't know, I feel more energy on, on a Friday. It's good. I love hanging out with you guys on Fridays, and I'm very excited about our guest today. Yes, yes. And our guest joining us today is Faunus. Faunus, how's it going? All good, all good here. Thanks. Thanks for asking. I'm in Angular Air, and as Bonnie said, it's Friday, end of day here. So everything are awesome. Everything's great. Yeah. And we got to learn some awesome stuff. Excited about that today. Um, yeah, you got a got some stuff, some slides and stuff. Uh, should we dive yes. right into it? Definitely. So I can share my screen right away. Also, uh, a lot of people here might not know you, so you're going to tell us who are you, where are you from? So yeah, I can present myself. Hey, I, have a, you I have a card for this to present myself. Uh, so I'm Fanis Prodromu. I'm from Greece, Athens. And uh, from top to bottom, I'm Angular Tech Director and Senior Instructor in CodeHub. Uh, I'm a front-end lead in the company Architects. Um, I'm authoring the book, Mastering Angular Reactive Forms, and I expect to have it published in about a month, something like this. And also, I have a free course in Angular Nation, and the title, the title is Intro to Reactive Forms. So feel free to join, of course, Angular Nation. It's, it's amazing. And uh, check also my course. And I'm co-organizer of uh, Angular Athens Meetup. And uh, on bottom right corner, you can see my contact details. Twitter is ProdromeF. Uh, my blog is uh, blog.profanis.me. I have some cool articles there, or I find them cool, at least for myself, they're cool. Uh, but you can uh, check it out. If you want uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn, ProdromeF, and something brand new from my side is a YouTube channel, and the name is Code Shots with Profanis. So the idea for this one is to have uh, code shots, as, as I said it, uh, of 10, 15 minutes, something like this, without any much details, or without, any, uh, without uh, too much details of theory, just how to do something. And uh, this is how it looks like. So please feel free, subscribe, so that we can uh, be updated. It's uh, brand new. It's uh, almost two weeks there. And I plan to have more videos soon. And the next one will be uh, uploaded tomorrow. And without any further delay, so let's start. So the today's talk is about lazy load components. And in order to present how to lazy load a component, I will guide you through how to load a component using a selector. And now you might be like, really? How to load a component using a selector? We already know this. I um, promise you that it's not going to be that boring. So I have some cool things there. And also the next thing, the, the next step is how to load a component uh, using a factory resolver. This is the way of how to dynamically load a component. And last but not least, how to lazy load a component. So we'll go uh, through them step, step by step. This is how the template looks like. Awesome. Uh, I'm not that proud for my artistic uh, thingies, uh, but this is how it looks like. It's just uh, a border here and uh, an arrow, prominent arrow, which says that here, render your component. And I really like the dashed outline. I think Listen, cool. I, I have seen some websites this week, so that is beautiful, and you should not be ashamed of it. <laughs> it's a good visual representation of what, like, it goes here. I like it. Sorry, and, keep going. Thank you. And uh, this is actually how the template looks like. It's a very simple, just a div tag here with a class, a uh, paragraph tag, another div here with a class, and inside here, we're going to render our component. And imagine the following. So let's say that we have this selector, up lazy content, and this is the template. 
in line template, like this is the content of the we have here a span with color red lazy load component. What will be the result if we load this selector in this uh, dust area? Of course, this is going to be our result. This is how it looks like in the template. So let's have a look. So let me close this one and jump into the code. So first, allow me to introduce you uh, to, to the code. Let me zoom in a bit. Uh, I think it's better. Is it better now? OK. Uh, yes. So let's start from the app component HTML. And we can see that we have here a selector, a lazy wrapper selector. And if we open this, what we can see is that we have only one selector inside the dust area, which is lazy content. And what is this all about? So let's close this and open the lazy content. This is a very simple component. The only thing that it has is just a selector and the template. And uh, I have also this code. I have removed this code from other branches, but not from this one. So ignore this code. So imagine that we do not have them uh, at all. Uh, so the only thing that we have to focus on is only the template. So if we can see this in the browser, what we can see is that render your component in the dust area, and this is how it looks like. Nice. For this presentation, I have also another component, and the name is lazy one content. So it's exactly the same, but lazy one. And my question here is the following. How about if I want in this container, in this wrapper, to load more than one component and have also a condition? Uh, I can imagine that we can have like in the wrapper, we can have like an input and the input to be, so let me just write it. The input could be like type and the type we can have a union here to be like either lazy or lazy one, something like this. And based on this type, then we can have our condition. And this condition could be again like, and if, if the type equals lazy, sorry, equals lazy, I want to present this and I can duplicate this and be like, but if I have another type and the type is lazy one, I want to load the lazy one content. And of course, we have to inject this type from the app component. So let's do this. So I will inject here the type and it will be like lazy. Let's go to the browser. What we can see is that we have the red one. But if we load the lazy one, what we can see is that we have the green one. So exactly the same component, exactly the same template. The only difference is that we have green and red and different name here. No more, uh, no more than this. So nice. But first, let's see now, actually, let's see how things work. It's very simple to have like a condition. It's very simple to have the, the, uh, the component. But let's see how things work. Imagine the following. In a matter of fact, actually, uh, every schematic in Angular is a class, right? So we have here a class. And we can have, again, a class for a directive, a class for a pipe. Everything is a class. What differentiates each class one with the other? Of course, this is the decorator. And Angular needs to, to compile this component. It requires to compile this code. And the compilation, the compiled code could be something like this that we can see on the right side. And what we can see here, we have the class name here. We have the FAC, which is from the factory. And here we can see that we have CMP, which denotes that this one is a component. And very important that we have here the type, and the type is the class name. And also we have the selector name. And of course, this has many other things. Uh, but I couldn't uh, fill uh, this in, uh, in this slide. So if we have uh, three components, for example, we're going to have three compiled components. Every, compo every component is going to be compiled. Now, imagine that during the Angular compilation, all the compiled components are kept in a stack, something like this. So we have a stack with all the compiled components. Of course, I do not imply that this is the architecture of Angular, but this at least will help us follow this, this presentation and understand uh, the rest of them. And if you're wondering 
how the lazy component or the lazy one content component looks like in the development tool. This is how it looks like. We can see here we have the FAC, which is the factory, and also we have the component with the type. And the type, this is very important, that the type is the class name. Now, let's visualize this and imagine that we have a very, very simple template. And our template is like we have a div element and also we have a component selector. And the component selector in this case is this one, up one CMP. And during the compilation, of course, we need to have uh, we need to have a grammar, we need to have a lexical anal analysis, and based on this, we have some tokens. So the token generator will see that from this code, I will generate two different nodes. And these are the component selector and the div. And based on these tokens, based on these nodes, then I can be like, okay, I want to pick uh, the code for the selector. What is the selector? This one. So the code is going to pick this one, this compiled component. If you remember previously, we had all the components in a compiled component stack. So this is our selector, and this is what we're going to get, up one CMP. And as soon as we have this, voila, we have it in the browser. But here we have a problem. And the problem is uh, not on the flow, not on, uh, not on the infographic that I presented, we have a problem of how to we load the components with a selector. How about if we want to load many components? Think that we need to go to load 10 different components. What are you going to do? Are you going to use an NGIF and switch something like this? It's okay, it's a, more than okay, but if we are strict with principles, Principles, this is a violation to open close, which says that the code should be open for extension, but closed for modification. And this is actually the problem that we will try to solve. The solution to this problem is to lazy load the components. And we will see this step by step. The recipe for this is that we need to have a view container F, which actually is a container where we can dynamically attach views on another component. So it's just a container, and we have many other components and we attach them to that container. And the second recipe is just to invoke a method. So simple as that. Just dynamically create a component. So this is the second leg, let's say, of this, this presentation, this talk of how to dynamically load a component using a factory resolver. The template is going to be exactly the same. No changes there. The only change is that we need to have an empty container, and more specifically, we need to have a template reference variable, like we see here, has lazy content. And we need this for a query later on. So firstly, let's see how things work. If you remember, we, we discussed about compiled component stack, and if you are wondering how the compiled component stack looks like, this is the icon that I couldn't find a better one. So imagine that this is how a compiled component stack looks like. And in order to dynamically create a component, you have to select, you have to resolve from this stack a component. So we are resolving by type. And if you remember, the type is the class name. So when we resolve, we have to provide the class name. And as soon as we have the compiled component, then we can create the component. And as soon as we do this, we have the component in the browser. Now, let's see a little bit the code. Previously, we had a template reference variable and the name was lazy content. So this is it. So we have the view child and definitely need to have this read option of view container ref because this is what we need to have, a container ref, a view container ref. Having this, then the steps are very easy and actually we have two steps. The first one is resolve the component. The complete method name is resolve component factory. But to make it more simple, we can be like resolve my component and we have to provide the class name. And if you remember, we have two different components. The first one is lazy and the other one is lazy one. So I want to resolve the component with class name lazy content component, nice. The, re the response of this, the return type of this is going to be a component factory. Having the component factory, what can we do? Create a component, providing 
what we just get from the previous line. And if you're wondering, where are we going to create the component? The answer is in the container. And what is the container? The container that we created previously, the template reference variable. So allow me to go uh, back a bit. So we said that we have resolve. So if we go back, we can see here two steps. The first one is resolve, and the second one is create. And if we can see the code, we can see resolve and create, two different steps. Now, let's see how things work. Let's see in action, actually. So I will kill this, and I have to do some changes, discard all my changes here, and be like, I want the branch dynamically create the components. Nice. So uh, as you can see in the app component, uh, also let's gain some time to start the server. In the app component HTML, I already have the lazy wrapper and I provide the component type. And if we go to the lazy wrapper, what we can see here is that we no, we no longer have the condition. Previously, we had a condition like, if the type is one, I want to load this. If the type is uh, something else, I want to load another selector, another component selector. But if we see the code, what we can see is that we have, let's say, a sheet of responsibility. We still have the condition, but now we have the condition in the uh, in the source code we have it in the component yes and the code is like if the component type the provided component type is lazy i want to resolve the component which component with the class name lazy content component which corresponds here if the component type is lazy one i want to resolve another component the lazy one content component and what is this and this is the lazy content component we have here and in any case I want to create a component. Very simple steps. But something very important in this one, whenever we, we use the component factory resolver, we need, let me open the app module, we need definitely to declare our components. So we have here lazy content and lazy one content, these two. And of course, definitely we have to have the end the components. If we do not have this, we cannot, we cannot dynamically load the components. So uh, two things, declarations and end the components. And let's see the code. Let's see the, the browser. If I click load the first, we can see that this is the lazy load component, the first one. And if I click the other button, we can see lazy one load component. Nice. So this is how we, we load the components dynamically. But previously, what I said is that uh, the solution to the problem is to lazy load the components, but I lied. So this wasn't a lazy load, this was a nigger load, but we will come to that. And the recipe to lazy load the component is that we need to have the view container F. We need to dynamically create a component, but the secret source here is that we need to have ES6 imports. And the code will be the same, the same like we saw previously when we dynamically load the component. So this is the third leg, let's say, of how to lazy load a component. And again, we need to have the container with a template reference variable, like we see here, lazy content. And now let's see the flow. If you remember, we said about compiled components. Yeah, we have the compiled components, but now with Webpack, we can create each, we can create different chunks for its lazy load component. And this is actually a benefit of the, for, or on the performance. So if we have 10 different components, this means that, we, that we're going to have 10 different chunks. They're not going to be in the main chunk. Uh, and having these chunks, then we can be like import or download this specific chunk in the browser. And what we're going to get is a compiled component. This is also something very important. When we download it, what we get is a compiled component. As soon as we have this, the flow is the same like we used previously when we dynamically create the component. We have to resolve by type. Which type? We have to define it with a class name, create the component, and voila, we have it in the browser. 
and the flow again here is sort of the same. When we lazy load the components, the flow goes like, we define the components and the components are compiled in different chunks and we do not have them in the browser unless we request them. So as soon as we like, I want the third component, we will have it in the browser. Now let's see the code. The code is that we need one more line. And this line is that we have to use ES6 import and provide the path of the component. My component lives here. Okay, so this is my path, nice. The return type of this one will be an object. I named it like lazy content component. And this object has a property and this property is the class name. If you remember, we said previously that we, in order to resolve a component, you have to provide the class name. So here's like the class name. So it's like lazy content component. Nice, so we have it. So as soon as we resolve, we can then create the component. Let's see it in action. So I will again switch, allow me to kill the server and also have like lazy load components with condition. So this is what we need. And let's see the code. Firstly, in the app component. Uh, in the app component, what we have is the lazy wrapper and we provide the selected component type. As soon as we have this in the lazy wrapper, we have a condition. So let me start also the server. So we have here a condition, sort of the same. So when we dynamically create the component previously, we also had a condition. And you might say now, you might be wondering, and what is the change? The change here is that we have to download on each different condition, on each different case. We have to download the component and we have to provide the path. So I want, if the component type is lazy, I want to import the lazy content and in any case to define the path and then resolve and create. And if the component type is lazy one, we have to do the exactly same thing, resolve and create. Something very important is in the app module. We do not have the declarations. Whenever you have a component in the declarations part means that the component will be part of the main chunk. So now we do not have it. And also we do not even have the entry components here. Nice, so this is very cool. So no declarations, no entry components. And Angular does the following. So it goes from top to bottom, let's say, and we'll see that we, ha that we have here a path. And be like, hmm, I know what you are trying to do here. You want to lazy load the component. No worries, I will compile the, com I will compile the component for you. So it, it will try to resolve this path. Can I resolve this? Yes. Can I resolve this? Yes. I can resolve the path. So as soon as, as soon as I can resolve the path, I will compile the component. So let's see the browser and see it in action. I will also open the development tools, clear this, and I will click the first one. Load the first. The, load the first. So as you can see, here we have a chunk name. Allow me to zoom in this a bit. So we have a chunk name and the chunk name is lazy content, lazy, blah, blah. And what we have here is the compiled component. And it's everything that we need. We have the factory, we have the component. Uh, somewhere here is also the type and somewhere also here is the, the selector. Everything that we have in this component. So let's clear this and click the second one. So load the second. Nice. So we downloaded the second one. And if I click now the first, we don't have to re-download them because they are already cast. They are already in the, in, the, in, the, in the application. So this is how we lazy load the, uh, the components. Can you see here a pattern like, so let's do it together. We have here lazy and we have also here lazy. We have here lazy and then we have lazy one and lazy one and lazy one and here also. So it seems that we have a pattern. So we will need this. <clears throat> the problem here is uh, exactly the same. So we said that we will try to resolve. We will try to solve this. We will try to make it even better and solve the open-close principle violation, but we didn't. The 
solution to this problem is to lay to lazy load the components, but this time using a pattern. That's why I presented to you that we have a pattern. So let's try to do it together. And I will change again uh, a branch. <clears throat> I will be like lazy load components with a pattern. I will kill the server. And now let's see what we have. As you can see, we, we no longer have that big boilerplate, let's say. We no longer have the condition, no more condition. The only thing that we have here is that we have to compute, we have to generate in the runtime, <clears throat> we have to generate the path. So the path is like this component type. And here we expect to have either lazy or lazy one. So lazy content slash lazy content component. Nice. So the idea is that we try to generate the path dynamically. And now Angular is like, OK, uh, I will compile the code. Ah, OK, I see that we have here an import, which means that you are trying to have a lazy load component. I will try to, re I will try to resolve the path and compile the component. And tries to resolve the path and fails. We cannot resolve the path because the path is, is generated in the runtime. So let's try to build this. Let's give it a time. Come on. Time is ticking. Hey, Fonis, while we wait for that, they want to know if this GitHub repo is uh, public. Sorry? Is this GitHub repo public? Yeah, is it's public. Or where they can see it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is public. All right. uh, so what we can see here is that we have some warnings. And the warning is like a, a warning on the lazy content and the warning here on lazy one content. So we have two different warnings. And please make sure it is in your TS config file via the files or include property, which means that Angular couldn't compile the components. So we have to provide our help there. And let's do this in TS config up here in the include. What I'm going to do is actually copy this, copy the relative path. And this is it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other one. Copy relative path. So we have it. So let's give it a try once more and compile it. And now what we expect to have is to see the chunks. We expect to see 0 and 1, two different chunks and not having the warnings. So cross your fingers not to have any warnings. So nice. So no longer warnings. And what we can see here is that we have indeed two different chunks here. So it will go in the browser. I will reload, clear this, and click the first button, load the first. And what we can see is that this is the name of the chunk. And this is the compiled component. So we provided our help to Angular, we brought to, to, to the framework actually, and we compiled the components by ourselves. And if I click the second one, we can see the second chunk. Nice. So this is actually how we lazy load the components. But you know what? We still have the exact same problem. So we said that we will try to solve the open close principle. And in the first place, we had this violation in the template. Then we had this violation in the source code. And now we have the same violation in the TS config. So let's solve this as well. So how can we do this? So if I have like lazy and anything here and delete this one, I expect to compile all the components, both the lazy and lazy one. And actually, this is a solution of how to compile your components that uh, they, they follow the same uh, the same path, the same pattern path, let's say. So let's give it a second. Nice. So what we can see is that we have two different uh, lazy chunk files. And if we go to the browser, I will reload, clear everything, and click load the first. Nice. So we can see it. And load the second. And I guess, I guess, so uh, live coding sometimes means that things go wrong, but I will give it a try. So if I copy and paste this one and be like, I want to have the lazy two content. 
You have nothing to worry about, Thomas, because Bill is crossing his fingers for you in the chat. Okay, nice. <laughs> so we have the lazy two content component, and I will change the selector, and I will change this one to lazy two, and the color will be, I don't know, black. I don't know. And yeah, actually, this is it, and the class name. So we have lazy two content component. And without making any other modification, I'm going to be like, I want to have one more button here with the exact same margin right. I want to have three and I want to load the lazy two. And this will be ng error. So let's give it a try. And if I click ng serve, now I expect to have three different tags, zero, one, and two. And if we click the third button, we expect to download the new component we have just created. And this is this is very cool because you can imagine that you can have many different components with the same infrastructure without doing any, any other uh, changes to your code. So we have load the first, let me clean this, load the second and NGR, we can see lazy to load component. Nice. So this is actually how we download a component using uh, a pattern and lazy load actually the component. And that was it. This is how, how we do it. So thank you very much. Do you have any awesome. questions? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I want to point out really quick that the reason you had to ng serve again when you made because you're actually changing the TS config file, right? Exactly. So like you yeah. couldn't just let the the live reload happen because you're actually making something that that affects how it builds completely. So you have to reserve it once you made that change to the star, lazy star, right? Exactly, exactly, yes, exactly. Yeah, this is awesome, so if, very if awesome. I had, if I had the exact same things uh, without any change on the TS config, well, we could uh, uh, have it as is, but yeah, any change to the TS config requires to, to reload it. And actually, I had to reload it at the NG serve when I had to switch from dynamic uh, to lazy load, because again, I had a change of the TS config. But now that you've got your TS config with the wildcard in there, now theoretically you should be able to drop yeah, another. You're right. You're thing. Right. So let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. <laughs> so let's create here. I get crazy one. here. So let's create lazy three. Cross your fingers again, Bill. <laughs> it's always when you go off the rails that things get crazy. I don't so think he ever uncrossed them. It's just lazy three and lazy <laughs> three. I think he just crossed more. Wait, three? How? I don't know how he crossed. And this is going to be lazy yeah. three. And yeah. what else do we need? We need the app component. And it will be merge the same margin. And I want to provide three. And the button will be please work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm, so let's see. Uh, you know what? Let's see. We'll have the chunks. It seems that we have another chunk here. And yeah, it works. Nice. Very good. Awesome. I really like that. And this is like I saw uh, Fanis talking. I, I think you, you did uh, uh, some stuff for us on Angular Nation. And I was like, he's such a good teacher. I really like that you, I, I like, I liked it the minute I saw the slide with the dotted line around it. I was like, that's such a simple visual. And then you just like, it's so simple when you just focus on like exactly one thing and it's really easy to follow. And uh, that was some flawless live coding. And oh, I am really good about your brand new uh, YouTube channel. Not that we want to mm, compete with your air YouTube channel, obviously. Definitely not. We oh, cannot. <laughs> Come on, Bonnie, you know, you know the drill. We're all about more content for everybody. The more I gotta, the better. I gotta give so. him a hard time though, Justin. I can't just like be like we don't even have Mike here to pick on anybody. I can't just be, I it can't be too easy. Like we have to harass the guests a little bit. A little bit gently. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we got a couple. So I, I want to break down some of the things that you talked about, right? Um, but really quick, we, we have one question in the um, chat about repeating the explanation of the, the ng serve and the reason why we had to do the ng serve, right? And, and that's the idea that like when we ng serve, it's live reloading. It's live reloading the build of our code, 
right? But the TS config is like the instructions of how to do that. And so if we change the TS config, then that requires us to ng serve again because that's the instructions that ng serve is going off of to then do its its stuff, right? So um, that's kind of why. It, so I, I I bring that up because I run into that all the time. Like I'll make a change and I'll be like, wait, why did it not change in my browser? What the heck? Oh yeah, I've got to stop the server and start it again because I actually changed the instructions for its behavior, right? So that's kind of what that is. I think that this kind of explanation, uh, I will copy and paste it in my notes, and the next time I will repeat the exact same thing. Very good explanation. They're cool. they're busting me in the chat because I was picking on your YouTube channel, Fanis. Oh, but thank I, you. Because I really think you're a fabulous teacher. That's the only reason why I pick on. You. I only pick on the people I like. You all know that. Thank you, thank you, Bonnie. Very awesome. So I got really excited when you initially started off and started and you dove deep into the compilation of the components and, and what we see there. Um, I had an opportunity to do a talk years ago on uh, at NG Comp, um, Embracing Component Tranquility, where I dove into and I called it the component tax, right? That that concept that every time we create a component, it's actually Angular's going to compile that and deliver that as a bundle, right? Um, mm -hmm. So we need to be mindful of that. And in this talk and this discussion, this whole approach that you're talking about is being mindful of that component tax that we pay. And when do we want to take that on, right? And and so when we lazy load it, we're saying we're deferring that uh, so the client doesn't have to take on that extra component you know, um, bundle until they actually request it. Um, and that's what's real slick about it. I love it, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's very useful. So I have used this one in, in a wizard. And sometimes the wizard, you have to present uh, sort of the same content. And you can be like, next, 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 and see different components. And sometimes uh, the requirements go crazy. And they're like, you know what? I want four more components, four more tabs. And you have a solution like this. It's very easy. So the only thing that you have to do is I have my content, my button, boom, ready. And the wizard's a great example because it's, you know, a lot of times in the web development space, you'll have abandonment, right? Where a customer will only go to step two and they're, they're out, right? Or, or maybe they make another decision and they're out of the wizard and into another piece of your site. Um, and that ability to only lazy load what they need right in that wizard step or, or those components is, is very powerful in terms of getting content and, and interaction to the customer instantly because the payload is a lot smaller, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, so I didn't dive into, and, and I had a question about what happens when those components that we lazy load need to have inputs and maybe even outputs bound to them. Um, hmm. Good question. what do we approach there when, when we say we want to not only load it, but now we need to wire up some stuff for it. So for this one, so what we can do, this, this is the, uh, the initial idea that I have. So if you extend a base content component or whatever, having a structure, you can even have here, for example, a method. And this could be like something like a hook. And as soon as you invoke this hook, you can do something, whatever. You can emit, you can output something, and you can even have your inputs. And the inputs could be like even public properties. And as soon as you, let me go to the wrapper, so as soon as you have the, the component here, the component factory, where is it? So from the component factory, you, you can get actually, uh, so where is it? You, you can have the instance of the component. So this is, I don't remember where this is, not the component class name. So I don't remember exactly where the code is. And of course, during live coding, you are more panicked in order to find it, and you cannot find it. But the idea is that mm, I will have like a pseudo code, right? So let's say that from the component factory, I can have here my component instance. And as soon as I have my component instance here, and if every component follows the exact same path pattern, let's say that I have the input of something, either being a title, a subtitle, or whatever, and if they have the exact same methods, you can either give or get something from that component. And is that is the line thirty one the create component? Does that return the component instance that it created? Maybe it's off of that. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. So, so let's see. And 
S and this is, yeah, this is the instance. And so, so yeah, so you can then like what you're saying is, is you can say, okay, I created like a TypeScript interface to define the API contract for any of these components, right? So if you create a, another component that you want to lazy load in here, it can have this API contract of these inputs and these outputs with these names, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, every time you instantiate one of these, that it's going to be an instance of that type. And now you have this pattern for, okay, I need to set the, the title of that component or the description of that component, right? Um, and follow that pattern, yeah. And works uh, just fine. So this is, a, this is a very cool thing. And as far as I remember, you can have here a generic type. So when you create a component, you can have since here something like, I want to provide the base uh, component the base content component so that you have, of course, this should follow the, this pattern as well. But as soon as you have the base content component, then you can have also the intelligence, which are, helps a lot. So yeah, and then you're really crafting that whole, like these, the the structure, the expected structure of those components that were, we allow this component to load look like this, right? So anybody who wants to create their own now follows that same contract of it should have input A, input B, or should have output this. And, and now you have the consistency even further with that pattern. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's yeah. really cool. <sighs> okay, so I had another comment that I want to talk on, but I forgot. So give me a second. Let me think about that one. Uh, maybe good. some of our other panelists <laughs> have some questions. But well, I, um, another thing that it's, um, how can I say, uh, that we might need to solve is how about if I want to have services uh, in the lazy load components. So for example, here, I want to have in the constructor a service. So if, if the service singleton, we will use the exact same instance. We want to recreate it. So we know that in order to recreate a, a new instance, we need to have a provider. And uh, either you have a provider to create a new instance or reuse an already created instance from the application. And this uh, works just fine. And another thing that it's a, uh, this is a very simple example. Mm, and I, I remember with, with Sanders, kudos to Sanders about this. How about, this is more complicated, let's say. How about if I want in the constructor to have uh, this component actually to depend on a module? What is my module? Because here is uh, just a component, but I want to have something like, a reactive module, for example, here. How can I do this? And the idea to this one, I can uh, very quickly present it. So let me go back. Is that we have to have something like a dummy module here. And so let's import this. And I will also have here the reactive forms module. Uh, of course, here. I don't need the providers, I don't need it here. And this is going to be my whatever module. So this is my module. This is what I have just imported. And in the declarations, I have to provide the lazy content component. And then I can be like, you know what? I'm going to have here a form control, for example. And I will have it like name control. And this will be a new form control. And the name control, I will apply a binding in an input. So input type equals text. And I want to have the form control. And I will assign it. I will bind it actually with the name control. And to make sure that this works nice, I will interpolate it using the dot value property. So ideally here is that when we download the component, when we are going to download the lazy content component, we will download actually the module itself, and which means that we will have the module. We already have this declared. And let's see if this will work without restarting the server. So this is the lazy, which is the first one. So let me clean this and load the first. Uh, no errors. And if I start typing, yeah. So this is this is how it works. It seems that uh, it's a workaround. I don't think that this is a, a legit solution to this problem, but it's a workaround. I haven't found any any other solution to this kind of problems, uh, but at least it seems that it works 
uh, nice and we have here the module and we also have the component itself. Nice, nice, yeah, very cool. Justin, can you see that question by Sai, uh, if I'm lazy loading a component? Because I, he's asking about performance issues, but I think there wouldn't be a performance issue as long as the components. Do you see that question in the chat? Yeah, the question and the question is about if they have a component that has child components. Um, and I think that's kind of, uh, Fonis, what you just went over in terms of an NG module, that would kind of be how you would do it. Uh, because when we just lazy load the component, the component uh, decorator doesn't have any way to define like child components that it has as part of it. So you need an ng module to do that and saying that this component also has these other components that it needs to bring in in order to define all these components as, as the declarations. And so if your component that you want to lazy load had other child components, it would need to have something like an ng module that helps define those, right? Yeah, exactly. So we can say that this one could be like the higher order component and this will be the orchestrator. I will have my module here and we'll have the, uh, the child components. So by this, uh, it will work, definitely. Yeah, so I think it's the granularity of, of what level are you going at, right? Like, are you loading a component and it's a basic component, you know, that has inputs and outputs, you're here, you know, if you need to start stepping up and saying there, there's other dependencies for that, you know, other component dependencies, then you start looking at like an NG module to, to orchestrate that and, and you just kind of move up the chain from there. Uh, but you have solutions to, to tackle those different, you know, things that you face, yeah. Exactly. Which is great because if you don't, and I've seen a lot of clients that just load everything on the home page. As soon as you try to view the home page, you see every single thing for every single page and it's a little crazy. So it's really nice to be able to do this. So. One other thing I wanted to point out in that code, uh, if you can bring the code back up for where we lazy load the component, right? And we, we call the module. Or I'm sorry. You just think you're there, Thomas. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. So in here, so one of the things you talked about is, you know, when we lazy load here, we have to um, bring in the, we're getting the value and then we're accessing the class name, the dot class name off of it. Um, did we, I can't remember, maybe we don't have to do that at this point. Where did we have that? Mm -hmm. So when we imported it and we got that lazy load component. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here. So line 24, so lazy load component. And then in the brackets, we're accessing a property and that mm -hmm. property is the component name. Exactly. Um, and when we got to that, when you're, when you showed that you have to now access the component name off of there, um, that import statement on line 23 is bringing in essentially the, the module, right? Um, and not ng module, but the module that's from that file. So if you're, if that file exported a class of your component, like it does, and it also exports a function, a named function or another class, then this lazy load, lazy content component object is going to have all of those exported pieces right exactly. from that import file. And so that's why we, at that point, we have to say, we want the class name from there that we use. If we had a function, we could access the function from there from that lazy load as well, right? Exactly, and I think that uh, even, like, like you said, this is a very good one. If we have export default here, uh, we can even get rid of this one and we can just, the default one to be the class name. And as soon as we have the class name, we can get rid of this a bracket property accessor, something like this. But yeah, it's a, exactly as you said that we have an ES module. So as soon as we have the ECMAScript module, we can do many things with this. And I think that's a good thing for people to kind of think about when we think about line 23, because we see that import call now when we do our routing, right? And I la lazy load the routes. Um, and we have like, we want to lazy load a module for a, an Angular route, and uh, we use the import statement. But then after we call the import statement, we have to do something after it, right? And, and what we're doing is we're getting a hold of the ES module, and then we're asking for the ng module class that's in that ES module returned from the import statement. And this is the very same thing here, is that when we call the import, we need to then ask for the piece of the ES module that we got back, unless we do the default, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
And uh, in, in this one, in another, uh, so let's say that um, very good, the, the thing with the ES6, uh, it's awesome. And let's now say that we don't need to have inputs, we don't need to have outputs, and we can get rid even from this boilerplate code, because sometimes it could be something like a boilerplate. So let's let's hope it will work. So I can be like, I want to have this as a component, component, and I want to have a type any, for example. Let me import this as well. And I can assign this to this component. So as soon as I have this, so let me go then on the HTML and replace this one with the ng component outlet and it will provide here the component so this is for very simple cases and it means that we can without having any boilerplate we can still use the lazy loaded component in the template in the in the container actually Bonus, they want to know if you can uh, debug this lazy loaded stuff in the, in the browser oh maybe yes so let's see Mm, if I want to have like the lazy content component and be like, here's my name control, and this will never so some breakpoints. I will go to the second and then on the first one. Yeah, you can debug it. You can have your breakpoints and uh, yeah, debug it. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a very cool. I, I really like it. Yeah, and again, like we're, you're lazy loading it, and it's a similar type of pattern that we do when we lazy load routes, right? And and ng modules. So the same kind of conceptual things that we think about in terms of can we debug that and and that lazy loaded module, right? Um, we can do the same kind of thing here because we're, we're essentially doing the same thing, but at a, a more granular level, right? All the way down at the component level. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. This has been awesome. Uh, you stepped through a, a lot of stuff in, in a simple form, which was great. I mean, we got we got to see the journey and and learn all these parts. And then even at the very end here, you just added a little bit of bonus, right? With with making that even simpler. So, uh, so much good stuff. It's been yeah, it's been great. Awesome. I knew you guys were gonna hit it off. I was like, happy Justin's gonna love you. Happy happy to share. So this is this is actually a case that. Uh, it was, uh, I wanted to make it work and uh, I spent some time and I was like, okay, since I spent some time, I will write an article and after the article, I will have a talk. So something that we know, it's uh, it, it's awesome to share it. So if you know something, just share it. So it's, uh, this is how, how I see it and it's, I love it. It's a great philosophy. I love it too. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, um, we're at the top of the hour, so let's uh, see if uh, we have any picks, and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Sound good? All right. Do any of our panelists have – Bonnie, you have a pick, right? I know you guys are going to look at me again like last week like I'm crazy, but I'm still picking GameStop. And y'all can laugh at me all you want to, but I love the GameStop. I'm all about the GameStop. And today is having a – I'm picking GameStop. And also a uh, community hangout on uh, Angular Nation right immediately after this. We're bringing Fonus with us. Fonus, you have time to join us. We're going to yep. discuss further. I yeah. will join. Keep an eye on that GameStop, y'all. You think I'm crazy. I know. I know. But just wait. Just wait. So you're picking GameStop. What, what does it mean to pick GameStop? Like, we should go shop there? Like, what, do, what are you picking for GameStop? Go Google. I just like the stock. There's some stuff going on, and you should just go check it out. It's, there's a, there's a whole thing. It's like this whole David and Goliath. It's just fun. And and also, like I said last week, I used to shop there with my kids when I was little. Um, but there's just interesting stuff going on with GameStop these days, and it's it's it's, it's interesting. Check it out. You should check it out. I'm gonna keep nice. picking it until y'all go and find out what's going on. You're like, what the nice. heck? Nice. All right. Very cool. I'm gonna pick the door. That Faunus has back there with the art. Is that a door with an arcade? Um, yeah, yeah. It's a door. Actually, the, the idea with this one is that I use Ubuntu 
And uh, in the company that I uh, have been working, we have MS Teams. And unfortunately, in MS Teams, I cannot have virtual backgrounds. And I was like, since I cannot have a virtual background, I will fix my background. And this is why I, I did it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Real, real backgrounds are always better anyways. So I love it. <laughs> but Fonis, you're about to lose this office, aren't you? Yes, in two months. It won't be, uh, it will be a baby room in two months, yeah. It will be a what? A pink baby room, actually. Uh, it's pink? It's yeah, officially it's pink. pink? Yeah, 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 it's pink. So when we had our daughter, we only had the office room. And so it became a nurse offery and it did dual duty as an office. No and way. A nurse, so. You used it as both? How yeah, did that work? It was a nurse well, it worked great when our daughter was sleeping and then it, it worked as full-time nursery when she was awake, <laughs> which was most of the time, but yeah. Good to hear. But we, Good idea. We, uh, that was back in like the, the wow days when World Warcraft became uh, just kind of launched and stuff. So we had, my wife and I had a dual desk on one side. And so we'd play wow. And then we'd switch over to the baby when uh, oh she needed some attention, gosh. was awake. And yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. There we go. There we go. Bonus, you were amazing. Speaking of amazing, uh, this was your first Angular Air visit. I think it went very well. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I think uh, yeah. it's able to say you should come back and teach us some more stuff periodically. We will be tuning into your YouTube channel, uh, and uh, and of course we'll see. So you have the brand. So you just released the uh, Reactive Forms, the free Reactive Forms course on Angular Air or on Angular Nation, which I'm very excited. I can't believe it's free because it's really cool. And I was like, Are you sure that you want this to be free? And he was like, Yeah. And I was like, Okay, man. But you're also working on a more advanced. Talk, uh, course as well, right? Exactly, yeah. And, uh, and the YouTube channel. And, and I expect okay. to have it. And the book. And, and a book, right? Yeah, Lots and the book. Fonis Padromo. So many, many things in the road, and uh, I'm, I'm busy with them, and I'm really, sometimes I'm very excited with all of them. I'm like, yay, let's do them. And then Absolutely. time hits and you're like, how do I have the time to do all this? Yeah. And then you yeah, just yeah. persevere through, find a way, yeah. right? The time management is, uh, is it's crazy sometimes. All right. Well, hey, Fonis, uh, like Bonnie said, it, we really, really appreciate you coming on, sharing your time, sharing this content. Um, it was an amazing presentation, uh, great teaching skills. Yeah, it took us on this journey. That was that was awesome. Uh, but we really appreciate you sharing your time and, and your thank knowledge. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot for having me. It was uh, awesome. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, Happy for sure. All right, have a good one, everyone. We'll see you next thank time. Bye-bye.